ultrasonic cleaner. Look, you can see, you see it there, it's still sweating. Yes. <laughs> kind of burns it off this, the, in, de in depth. Ah. Smart trick. Peace. Whoa! Hey, welcome to today's video. We are tearing down a P200 motor that has a broken crankshaft taper. This engine will be rebuilt as a 208cc motor, which takes the original cylinder, strokes it with a 60mm crankshaft, and we're cutting ports into the cylinder and into the cases. On today's video, we're focusing on tearing down the motor and cutting these ports into the cylinder as well as the crankcase. This engine came through my shop and before I finished any of the other projects you see on my channel, I figured I want to share this with you. Every time I tear down an engine, be it for myself or for a customer, I use a five page checklist to make sure that uh, some parts are reusable or are required to be replaced. The motor itself actually fired up, but the way that the flywheel was bolted down onto this crankshaft was really sketchy. Um, that's why we decided to remove everything, do a full analysis and then see what's happening. And here you can very well see that the thread on the crankshaft has been basically cut off and there wasn't enough thread to keep the flywheel on. The rest of the teardown didn't reveal much that was busted, so we're going to keep the original gearbox, uh, the original gearing, except for a short of fourth. But we will be replacing all the internals like bearings, seals, gaskets, rubber parts, just to make sure you're basically getting a new engine when this is done. The stator that came with it was completely busted, so I'm going to use one of my uh, stator rewiring kits to rewire it and give it some fresh wires. I have made a video on this kit um, that you can find in the description down below or on my channel. Um, it's basically straightforward. You have wires that are pre-cut, pre-soldered, two lengths and color-coded. And all you have to do is remove the old wires and solder on the new ones. While the cases were taking a bath in the ultrasonic cleaner, I started working on the original cylinder. So the goal here is to use the existing port, which usually is just fed through the piston. And above it, cut an extra port into the cylinder on each side so we can have basically case ports on a stock P200 cylinder. The initial attempt to mark the ports doesn't have to be super accurate, you can just eyeball it. The main goal here is to find a nice little center line that we're going to use to drill holes into it that get us started for the dremeling. I was able to drill a hole to a width of half an inch, which takes a lot of strain from the grinder later on and makes it easier for you to get started on these ports. Here you can see the hole above the existing port and now with a grinding rotary tool, be it a Dremel or whatever you have at hand, we grind open the port and basically create a case port for this P200 stock cylinder. After initial rough cuts, they do look pretty good to me. I will go in there with a 90 degree tool at some point and clean up the internals. The existing ports in any 200 case that just feel kind of out of place, they don't do anything. So I prefer to close them up. I use a uh, two component epoxy, a high heat version of it. 
I clean the cases thoroughly by heating them up and then cleaning them with a brake cleaner. And then I push a big dab of epoxy putty in there. Then with the rotary tool, I clean up the excess epoxy. Um, I just kind of follow the arch of the crankcase. As long as you create clearance for the cylinder, this doesn't have to be super accurate. For the gasket surface, I very gently use a file. I gotta be really careful to not damage the gasket surface here. Now that we have ports in the cylinder, we're gonna try and transfer that design onto the cases. I use a big dab of grease and push both gasket surface of the cylinder and the crankcase together and you can kind of see the outline of the port. This is a good method to use when you don't have uh, good access to the ports with a pick. However, you can also do it by sliding the cylinder on one side in and then following the port window and you get the idea of where your port wants to be. Then using a rotary tool, you cut those ports out. They're really not that big but they're better than no ports. This concludes today's video. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. We're still waiting on a couple parts and when they get here, I'll see you next week. Who's that? Carburetor.